Welcome to another module of the Lightweight M2M Academy. Great work on making it this far. So today we're going to talk about device management, which is one of the main reasons why people choose Lightweight M2M. So device management is critical for ensuring reliable operation of IoT systems throughout their entire lifetime. And it involves several things, among others, secure provisioning of devices. So basically the process where the device connects to a server, but also remote configuration of device parameters, including renewing security credentials, modifying device settings, such as APN settings or Wi-Fi credentials. But you can also think about sensor calibrations. Managing devices behavior may include adjusting intervals between data collection or the frequency of data transmissions, but also setting specific triggers, which can be either time or value based that, that, that triggers devices to send an update message. And finally, remote updates of device firmware, which is one of the most crucial features for long-term viability of IoT applications. And the Lightweight M2M protocol defies a standardized approach for efficiently managing IoT devices. And in this module, we'll dive into the device management capabilities of this standard and explore its features and functionalities. So the Lightweight M2M standard defines four so-called interfaces. And two of them we already discussed in previous modules, the Bootstrap interface and the registration interface. So I'll give a short recap of those interfaces, but I mostly want to talk about the device management interface and the information reporting interface. Starting with the bootstrap interface. As you've learned before, the bootstrap server is a virtually isolated server and the clients can first connect to this bootstrap server to retrieve all the required information that allows them to connect to a lightweight M2M server securely. And the process you know, is quite straightforward. So the client performs a bootstrap request after which uh, once acknowledged, the bootstrap server sends the information to connect to a server. And also the registration interface you've seen before. So once the device has all the necessary information to connect to a server, it basically sends a register command to a server and after um, receiving confirmation from the server, it can start sending telemetry data. And in this registration interface is also defined that the client sends periodic updates, basically saying that it's still alive. The device management interface, or, or actually how the full name goes, the device management and service enablement interface is the primary interface for device management. So the device uses this interface to remotely manage the client. It then defines a set of standardized instructions, which we call operations, which the client needs to act upon. So the server can send a discovery command to retrieve information from the client on what objects and resources are supported. Or it can read a specific object, object instance or resource, and retrieve the latest um, values, for example, the latest sensor values. So writing or the right parameters, um, allowing, for example, to change the state of digital switch. Execute can be used to invoke a specific action, such as a reboot, a factory reset, or a firmware update. And the create and delete operations are mostly used for creating or deleting object instances. In the exercise, you experiment with this data management interface. And from the Coyote IoT device management platform, you'll actually set specific observations um, all according to the Lightweight M2M specifications. Then the information reporting interface. And this is mostly used by the client to transmit data so the information reporting interface is used by the client to transmit data. So one of the operation is sent and the client uses this operation to basically send data packets without explicit request from the server. 
another operation is called notify. And notify is basically the response to this observe request that is initiated from the Lightweight M2M server. And observe operations request the client to send data at regular intervals. For example, at regular time intervals, let's say every 30 minutes or every two hours, or when specific resources exceed a specific threshold. For example, when temperature I don't know, exceeds 30 degrees, then that could be a trigger for the device to send a notify message. So let me explain what such a send operation may look like. So in this example, we're using SendML JSON to send radio signal strength and location data. So as we learned in the past, before sending the actual data, we first indicate what type of data we are about to send. So object ID 4 is about connectivity monitoring, resource 2 is radio signal strength. So we start with this section before sending the actual value. Same for location. So object ID 6 is represents location, resource 0 represents latitude, resource 1 represents longitude. And when combined, that gives us this specific message. We can further reduce the message size, not by using SendML JSON, by using SendML CBOR. And this is a binary encoding format that can further reduce the message size. So thus far the theory about device management, a critical aspect of the Lightweight M2M standard. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Lawrence and I'm wishing you all the best with the upcoming exercise.